Hi there, Dr. John Kenworthy here and welcome to this Leadership App where we are taking a look at the difference between coaching, mentoring, counselling, training and managing. At the end of this Leadership App you will be able to identify the type of developmental support that you seek and ask the right questions of anyone you may consider working with to ensure the best fit for you now. So let's take a look at the main similarities and differences, as this may be helpful for you in establishing the style you would prefer someone works with you. There is considerable overlap between these developmental approaches, with each having a performance, direction, support or personal well-being focus in the context of the organisation, your career or your whole life. Improving performance is largely about developing your job skills, competences, whilst developing your soft skills, competencies, is better served through direction and support. Developing your character is best served through supporting your development and a focus on your personal well-being. Managing is in the organisational context and focused most on improving performance and giving direction. Training, or teaching, is a directive and structured approach to improve performance and either the job skills, knowledge, or the softer skills of how to do your job more effectively. Business coaching is focused on performance and or soft skills development in the organisational context or the context of your own career. Mentoring is in a more personal context to develop your career or some other aspect of your life. Mentoring is much more supportive in focus than business coaching. To ensure that you are empowered with the wisdom and resources you need. Life coaching is the most dominant approach to coaching in the current climate. Some is directive and some is supportive in the focus or style of coaching. It is much more about your own life and career than about the organisation you work for or the job you do. Less to do with developing specific job skills or competence and more to do with developing the soft skills. Counselling is usually a more therapeutic approach and is very much about your life and personal well-being often detached from career issues and a very supportive focus to your personal development. You'll see that there are overlaps indicated in the diagram, perhaps more so with the growth of life coaching, which has filled a niche in developing you in your life whilst not being therapy or counselling. So what's professional leadership caddying? Well, I started to call myself a leadership caddy because my clients needed me to flex and adapt my focus and approach to their needs and preferences. Principally, leadership caddying is a business coach and mentor. Although some clients need to gain knowledge about leadership and how to do leadership, as well as how to be a leader. And of course, when you go to work, you bring along your own human needs and desires too. So professional leadership caddying is a more fully encompassing role. And like a golf caddy, from where I derive the term. Your caddy carries the toolkit clubs for the leader, player, knows the course well, knows the leader well, and knows which tool to recommend for that leader for each and every outcome. Your caddy communicates with the leader, keeps score, and serves the leader. Let's look at the two major business areas of personal development, mentoring and coaching. What is mentoring? In spite of its origins in Greek culture some 3,000 years ago, mentoring is a buzzword today, where life and work is high-tech but not high-touch. When we use the word mentoring, a dozen or more different images race across our minds. It seems that we might not all be on the same page. It will serve us well then to offer a working definition that brings us all together in our understanding. Here, I've tweaked a definition originally from Paul Stanley and Robert Clifton, and later by Dr. Tim Elmore. Mentoring is a working relational experience through which one person 
empowers and enables another by sharing their wisdom and resources. Okay, what is coaching then? Well, in the 16th century, the word coach described a horse-drawn vehicle to take people from where they were to where they wanted to be. In the 20th century, big buses with rows of seats were also called coaches. And their purpose was the same, to get people to where they wanted to go. The word coach was given athletic meaning around 1880 when it was used to identify the person who tutored university students in their rowing on the Cam River in Cambridge. Later, the word and role became associated with musicians, public speakers and actors who rely on coaches to improve their skills. Don Shula, former coach for the Miami Dolphins, wrote about athletes who would come to his team with their skills and talents, ready to submit to the coach whose job was to instruct, discipline and inspire them to do things better than they thought they could do on their own. A coach is a vehicle to take someone from where they are now to where they want to be. Eric Parsler, author of The Manager as Coach and Mentor, defines coaching as a process that enables learning and development to occur and thus performance to improve. In the application section of this leadership app, you can choose from the five main focus approaches to personal development in different contexts. These are training or teaching, coaching, mentoring, counselling and managing. Consider your own development needs for now and choose the option most appropriate for you. If you find that one focus or style is dominant for you, then that is the type of development support you should seek for now. So crack on with the leadership app, fill it out and remember to submit so that you get your PDF copy of your report.